All right, now we're going to look at paint and how to make paint look peeled off the surface. So what I have is nothing new for the workflow. As far as, far as the workflow is concerned, if you look here, I have a couple different textures. Uh, here's texture one. And what this is is just cracked paint. And what I did is I shrank it down. Here's the original. And then I, I shrank that down and duplicated it a bunch of times, just like I did with all the other textures. So I don't want to keep showing that in the video. It's very boring to watch. Here's Rust. Did the same thing. Here's the texture that I used. One of these. Okay. Again, you can find a variation online uh, anywhere. So what we're going to do is have this as the outer and then have this as the underlying. Now what I'm showing you is if you go to channels and duplicate your blue channel. So how you duplicate something is, first off, let me delete this copy. Um, you just drag it down here and duplicate it. And then we have to turn this completely black and white with no variations of gray. To do that, there's a couple. I could do threshold if I wanted to. Okay, that's a good one. Or I can go to image adjustment levels and I can bring my peaks to the center. I kind of like doing this. It has a lot more detail. And then I can load this as a selection. Okay, then I can go back over to here. I don't want to ruin this texture. Uh, I well, it looks like I made a copy of it anyway. So, so select inverse, and then hit delete. Select deselect. So now what I have is this. Now I don't know if I like the blue, to be honest with you. I just needed a peeled paint look. So I don't have to use that. It's just there if I need it. The blue wouldn't match anything else in my scene. So I'll probably do some color corrections to it. And I might even do an invert. Ooh, God, that's horrible. So let's do some hue saturation first. Okay, the white's a little bit better. Better than the blue. The black might look good as an overall because they had a lot of black lacquer in that time. I would say that this one needs to be hue saturation down a little bit more. And it needs to be a lot more contrast to it. So you see I have a brightness and contrast. I have a hue saturation already. Um, in fact, if you look at my adjustments, I have that saturation down quite a bit. What it needs to have a pump in that area so the underlying is a lot stronger. Again, whenever I'm talking about amping a texture, I'm talking about levels. Okay, so let's go back here and turn this on. I like that better. And I hope that didn't just crash. There we go. Good. All right, now I'm going to save this as a TGA and call it kind of like peeled paint. Peeled paint color map. And that's going to be one of my general textures. I'm going to use that a lot. So in Maya, I'll drag that in. In fact, I, I have it dragged in already. I'm just right clicking on it and reloading it. So there's nothing new either there. There we go. 
Now let's go take a look at that on a mesh. A lot different, right? Much different. Because it's so small, the UVs are so small, uh, I get it to scale in real life. Okay, what it needs is a normal map in order to make the detail pop. So let's kind of look at making a normal map for something like this. Again, remember the rule, white is to bump, black is to invert or suck into the, the Z space. So in this case, it would be edit, copy, merge, edit, paste, clean up your workflow a little bit. So all these have to do with the color. Do a layer, group layers, label that color. And this one, I would have to invert it in order for it to make sense as a normal map. So invert. And a better thing to do just before you invert is what? Steal the color. I'm trying to get that black and white contrast. There we go, just like that. Now we can invert it. And then we can turn it into a normal map. There we go. Really, really high res. Look at that. All right, let's save that. TGA. Uh, peel paint normal map. And then we'll go right back into Maya and apply that. So as I go through the series, you know, I'm just going to take away just a little bit at a time and get this, you, the student, to extrapolate a little bit more. Uh, not handhold you all the way through the series because, yeah, he's got to start learning this and applying what you know from the previous video. A lot of times, <laughs> uh, and you have to retain it too. You know, it's not like you, you just forget this stuff. You have to be able to retain it more than a few hours. Okay, so that didn't apply too well. I'm just going to try that again. Middle mouse button, click and drag to bump map. And let's look at the surface now. You can see the detail, the sharpness appears better. Now, let's kind of look at the contrast and the color next to some of the other message. So shift D, I'm just going to duplicate that and bring it to something along the ways of this door. If you hit F, you can zoom in. So that's very contrasty next to the door. Does it stick out? I would say it sticks out too much next to this. So that's what I'm saying. Always kind of compare it, look at it. Does it look like it would in real life? I would say it would have a lot more toned down black and the orange wouldn't be there. Okay, so back to Photoshop so we can color correct it. Whenever I'm talking about color, I'm going to talk about this one over here. So what can we do to make this a lot different? Uh, the black needs to be toned down. Okay, so let's go in here and see if we can find an adjustment for that. Let's go to exposure maybe. So there we go. I could expose it down. It gives it a more faded sun look. And then the orange needs to be toned down. So that's underneath this. I already have a few of these. 
what I'm going to do is drag this one up. Hue saturation is going to be on top. It's my most important feature. And there we go. I like that better. A lot less contrast. Saving that right over the top. You want to eliminate alpha channels if you have any. And make sure it's only 24-bit. We'll get into 32-bit in the next video. Alright, so let's reload this. Much better. Contrast levels there, details there. Now it looks to me like it's inverted. You see that? Like all the white should be technically sucked in and all the black should be out dented. All right, well, let me show you a way to fix that. On my normal map, I can go to channels and go to the green channel and go to Image Adjustment Invert. This will invert the normal map altogether, uh, making the exact opposite happen. So let's take a look at that now. So save as TGA. Back to Maya. And I'm just going to reload that off on my other monitor. Yep, that's what I want. I want the paint to be, f it feels like the paint's on the surface and the rust is in the background now. Perfect. All right, so now that we have this, um, we can apply it to the other meshes. And if we need something random, like let's say I want a window of a different variation, all I had to do is have to adjust my UVs. So my UVs, if I move these around, I get a totally different look every time I move them. Very cool. All right, so that is creating high-res peeled paint look for uh, this scene. Enjoy.